guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is December 31st, 2020, and this is the Flight Sim News. So the, the year is almost up. It is New Year's Eve, and I thought I'd do just one more Flight Sim News before the year's over. And uh, this time out, I'm taking a look at something over at the Growling Sidewinder. They came out with a video that was really pretty cool. Uh, it's basically uh, basic terminology explanations for beginners. Fox codes, MAR, cranking, uh, all these different terms that you're going to find used in Digital Combat Simulator. And it really does cover everything rather well. So if you're just curious as to what some of these uh, fighter pilot jargon actually is, and, uh, you know, Fox 1, Fox 2, Fox 3, uh, BVR, uh, Hot Cold, all the, all the above, uh, this video really goes into detail and it's about 17 minutes long and it's definitely worth checking out. I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual and you can check it out for yourself. Alright, War Thunder has been updated again. Uh, basically if you go through there's a ton of different fixes and improvements. It's update 30.12 2020 or 2.3.0.62. Uh, they've changed some things in the interface, they've changed some things in sound. Uh, something about tank football, I didn't know this was a thing. Uh, they've made some changes to the battle pass, uh, flight model changes to the F84F, and then there's some graphics and physics uh, changes or improvements. I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. Here's a fantastic article I found from Sergio Costa over on the Hellasimmer that I thought was pretty cool. There's a freeware version of the AH-64A Apache for Aerofly FS2 final version that has been released. It says the Apache is out of its beta stage, and although with not limitations you can download the final version right away and uh, Sergio makes a couple comments about it there's a couple images here um, makes me want to check out Aerofly FS2 I've never checked out or flown Aerofly FS2 but I'll tell you what it looks pretty kick-ass uh, I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual and you can check it out for yourself so Greg over at Reflected Simulations is in the news again. Uh, I found this yesterday, and it's basically a post uh, referring to Ralphie Dude's preview of the first mission of the Zone 5 campaign that uh, Greg is working on. Uh, I'm not going to read the entire thing, but uh, he goes on to say, uh, it starts out with, thank you for all the love and shares. I would like to address one of the reoccurring comments why real bullets and kills and it says bio gives you the short answer because it's a game and it's cool to blow stuff up and he's right and then he says I'll give you the longer one DCS doesn't register damage on units set to immortal this means that there's no way for the mission editor to know if such a unit was hit I'm not sure what happened in the video I guess I'm gonna have to go watch the video but um sounds like there's been a few negative comments referring to something that happened in this mission but the good news is zone 5 is going to be awesome and it is a campaign for the f-14a that he's been working on and uh, also in just the last flight sim news we found out that Greg is going to be the guy working on the campaign for the uh, f4u1d Corsair from Leatherneck Simulations and uh, I don't think they could have found a nicer guy and a more capable person to handle the job. I'll throw a link to this in video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. All right, this is a pretty short one today, but some pretty cool stuff in here. So over at the Stormbirds, uh, Shamrock15 posted uh, a, a article called DCS World 2020 Year in Review, and it's basically his take on what he thinks of DCS and what they've done all year. And some of the stuff I would agree with and some of the stuff not so much. So he covers pretty much everything. It's really a good article. I'll throw a link to this in the video description so you can check it out for yourself. And uh, I'm not going to cover everything in it. I'm just going to give you my thoughts on DCS in 2020. 
Uh, personally, I think one of the coolest things to have happened was the Syria map. I really enjoyed the Syria map. I thought the P-47 was a good release. Um, but some of the things that didn't happen in 2020 uh, was like the Hornet is still in development. How many years is this now? The F-16 is still in development. Um, the Warthog was a little bit of a mess when they came out with their little upgrade. Uh, they pretty much shit on me when it came to trying to upgrade the version that I had, and that was pretty shitty. So when, when I think about Eagle Dynamics in the year in review, I have a little bit of a different picture, you know. I think some of the people in the background are real shitty people, and, um, you know, they could use an attitude adjustment. Um, as for what they've done, Syria map was awesome. The P-47 was a pretty solid release. I'll give them that. And I think the one thing they did that was good, and I will give them you know, credit for that, was the free-to-play. So when the world went to hell in a handbasket with all of the you know, virus crap and the world shut down and everybody was stuck at home, they were kind enough to come out with a free-to-play that lasted, God, was that a month or two? I, it just seemed like a very long time to me. I don't remember how many weeks it was, but it was definitely a, a nice extended period of time that they not only let everybody fly everything for free for a while, but they had everything on sale as well. So I'll give them credit where credit is due. Um, but a lot of things happened in 2020 in DCS, and you know, to me, like the supercarrier... I don't know, man. I, I kind of think of that as a failure, to be honest. Um, it's something they should have given us for free and not charged money for. You know, that that's a gameplay feature. Why are we paying for a gameplay feature? You should put that in your product to make your product better. Um, yeah, so that that's kind of... And that's still not done, you know. Uh, I like the uh, updated Kuznikov carrier. I'm sure I butchered pronouncing that. I did like the updated uh, Su-33 that they came out with with that. That was nice, but I don't find myself using that that often. I just don't think it's that big of a deal. I can live with it or live without it, but it, it, it should have been a feature, and it's not something we should pay for. That's just my opinion. Um, I want to say that uh, that weird aircraft, uh, the Jeffy came out, Ju-17 or whatever it was, that Chinese aircraft, and uh, yeah, there's just some things, like a lot of stuff happened in DC. Oh, and the other thing I thought was really good was the lighting update. The lighting update was awesome, but that was a two-edged sword, too. So they came out with this fantastic lighting update and made everything finally look better at night, and then the performance of doing so taxed the systems a little bit more. So, and on top of that, VR went down the toilet in DCS. And I still think it's a shitty, terrible experience in DCS. It just is. When you have a powerful PC and a decent VR headset and you struggle to get, you know, 30 to 45 FPS, and once things start happening and, and things just start stuttering, it's just a mess. So, yeah, I think they killed VR in DCS in 2020. The supercarrier, in my opinion, is a failure, and it should have been a feature, not an add-on that we had to pay for. And uh, how many projects are out there right now that are still not done, you know? And they keep pushing new ones and new ones and new ones. And the best news for DCS of 2020 just came a few weeks ago when they said they're going to do an Apache helicopter. But when are we going to see that? So, I don't know, man. Like, there's a lot of cool stuff. I like the channel map. The channel map was fun. The Syria map was fun. P-47 was probably the best warbird they've ever come out with in DCS. Um, but those are the only things in my mind that stand out as being good, you know. And uh, what else happened in 2020? Um, I'll tell you what is really shitty about 2020. Have you tried to buy a joystick? So here's Newegg. And if we look on Newegg, this, which was $119, is now $288. Surprisingly, this grip is still 229 from Thrustmaster, which is, you know, that's the MSRP, but you can't use that without a stick or a base. Oh, look, a Warthog stick is $689. The magnetic base alone is 229 And, um, look, 
these T-Flight rudder pedals, $209.99. These were $100 rudder pedals, maybe even $89 on sale. Um, and then checking Amazon, kind of the same thing going on over at Amazon. An X52 Pro is $289. These were about, what, two and a quarter? Those went up a little bit, but the stuff that skyrocketed was anything with the name Thrustmaster on it. And I really feel bad for anybody. If you break anything that you have right now, you're screwed. I don't know how you're going to get a replacement for anything, unless it's under warranty, but then you got to deal with uh, whatever crappy tech support Thrustmaster has these days. It isn't what it used to be. It isn't the U.S. company that it was years ago. Um, but yeah, so not only can you not buy GPUs and, and the current best CPUs that you can buy out there, if you want the new AMD stuff or any of the new 3000 series you know, GPU cards, um, this whole pandemic just really shit on everything when it comes to you know flight sim hardware and the ability to upgrade more than anything. It's been a terrible year when it comes to that kind of stuff. And again, knock on wood, I'm thankful my gear's still working. But you know, if you break something, I mean, the only the only people that have been able to deliver throughout this has been like the Verples and the VKBs. But God, you're talking three to five hundred dollars per device. So that's three to five hundred dollars for a stick, three hundred to five hundred dollars for a throttle, and then you've got to wait forever to get it. So I, I think this whole pandemic opened up a hole for those guys. You know what I mean? To pick up the slack. But you know, we went from being able to buy you know this uh, sixteen hundred this sixteen hundred Hotas that was like you know one hundred nineteen dollars to now two hundred fifty bucks. And the throttle alone now I've seen as high as 200 and that was $89 for the TWCS. So it's a freaking bad time to have any hardware break or have to replace anything. 2020 is just the absolute worst when it comes to that. There is one thing I think about 2020, and I look back at everything in flight sims that happened in 2020. And I think Microsoft Flight Simulator was a really good thing. I think Microsoft Flight Simulator would be up there in the top three things I think that were cool about flight sims in 2020. But personally, I think the number one thing and the number one company in my mind has been 1C Game Studios when it comes to flight sims. They haven't done a thing wrong. They continue to improve their products. They don't make promises that they can't keep. They don't have things that are in limbo. And like every month practically, if not every other month at the very least, you know, there's big updates that bring a lot of new things and fixes. And they have a solid game system with the Great Battle series, you know. And I think personally, the coolest thing to happen in 2020 was Flying Circus Volume 1. And I know you're going to say, ah, oh, that's just World War One planes. But I'll tell you what, man. Um, when I sit back and think about how much fun have I had with my flight sims in 2020 and the things that stood out the most, Flying Circus Volume 1 is definitely it. Um, there's something about the VR experience or even the Track IR experience in an open cockpit plane. And they've really captured the essence of that. I've flown in a Boeing Stearman years ago, which is an open cockpit plane. And this really captures that feeling. You know, uh, if you turn a fan on while you're playing, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think that's all you're missing. You know, you really are. It is just a fantastic experience. And it's so much fun. And I've, I've had more fun just screwing around in these biplanes than I have in anything else this year. So I'm going to say, if anything, the coolest thing to happen in Flight Sims in 2020 was Flying Circus Volume 1, hands down. Second coolest thing, um, the Great Battle series. And, and as much as they continue to update it the way they have, you know. And then the third thing, probably Microsoft Flight Simulator. And then after that, all the different DCS stuff that I've enjoyed that came out this year, like the Channel Map, Syria... The, the P-47, those are the things that stand out in my mind. And then, of course, you know, I can't forget about the F-14A Tomcat, but I, I'm not that excited about that now because it was towards the end of the year. So when I think about, you know, 
the amount of time I've got to spend with things in 2020 that were cool. Um, Tomcat came out in November, like a month ago. So haven't had that much time to enjoy the A, uh, the Tomcat F-14A. But I have flown a lot of Flying Circus Volume 1. Uh, I have flown a lot of great battles, you know. And the great thing is, is in the VR experience, it's smooth. And it runs rather well. And it's not unoptimized like DCS is. So when it comes to, you know, Warbirds and World War II stuff, as much as DCS looks better, this performs better and looks fantastic in its own way. It's just a different art style. So I could go on forever about things that happened in 2020, uh, but I personally think Flying Circus Volume 1 is the best thing that happened to flight sims in 2020. And again, uh, DCS had a lot of interesting stuff, but they had a lot of sore spots too. Uh, I think Eagle Dynamics has a lot of work to do because, you know, used to be able to actually enjoy the VR experience, and after the lighting update, VR went down the shitter bad. It really did, and it hasn't recovered yet. It just hasn't. I know a lot of people are saying, I can enjoy it. I play it just fine at 40 frames per second. And I'm like, man, we all have a different, you know, threshold for what is acceptable, I guess. And a lot of people, what they think is what it is, is, you know, something that I look at and go, I couldn't do that. You know what I mean? So that is 2020 in a nutshell. And that is the Flight Sim News for 2020. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that, guys. So as always, thanks so much for watching. Uh, Please subscribe to the channel. Feel free to hit that like button. And until next time, guys, I'll see you next year.